Hello and welcome to The Daily Space for today, August 5th, 2019. I am your host, Dr. Pamela Gay, and I am coming to you using Wirecast with audio on both the left and the right, and I'm coming to you from an entirely different location that allows me to use a green screen. Now, I'm also coming to you on a Monday that presented me with zero press releases that aren't embargoed. Yeah, it's a slow news day. So I used the day to get everything set up down here, and I'm going to use the day to catch you up on what's going on around CosmoQuest. First things first, I'm kind of excited about having a green screen working again. Now, if you notice, there's a desk behind me and not in front of me. That's because I need to get wheels to put on this one. Uh, just because it's, yeah, just because. I'm in a weird space. So let me give you a view of my situation. So here is the basement I am currently sitting in. So, uh, hi, this is my basement. Um, yeah, let's not s hang out with that view. So, um, I'm coming to you live from my basement, and the reason I have been systematically moving my recording studio around my house is twofold. One, my attic is really the best place in the house in terms of look, feel, being able to leave stuff up there, no problems other than the occasional dead bugs and dead birds. Our house leaks birds. Um, but the attic isn't temperature controlled. And because it's the attic, it's, it, it's really cold in winter and really hot in summer. The other day it actually hit 54 Celsius up there and uh, that's the 130s for those of you who speak Fahrenheit. Now the reason I haven't set up in the basement before is because well oh as I'm apparently still showing you because I forgot to click a button um, my basement is kind of the Blair Witch Project of basements. It's kind of horrifying down here. So now that I'm set up down here, um, I have a dehumidifier going. I got a filter for a shop vac, so I'm going to actually be vacuuming the ceiling down here. And I'm working to turn the basement into a livable space because the basement being underground is self-regulating temperature-wise. And it's a perfectly reasonable temperature here right now. It'll stay a perfectly reasonable temperature year-round. So hopefully this is a new setup that, well, isn't getting, going to get in the way of my work setup, isn't going to get too hot, isn't going to get too cold. It's just going to look like something out of Blair Witch Project if I give you a wide out view. So welcome to my basement, people. I promise no one is actually going to murder anyone down here. We hope. Um, so beyond that, this is a project that's been going on slowly for weeks and weeks. What's more exciting that's going around CosmoQuest is we have been working on the Benny Mappers project all summer. We launched on May 22nd. We've been mapping madly ever since. We're in the final push to the finish line. And the mission team is looking for four sites that they're going to select to go get samples and I spent my weekend writing the software that's going to allow me to know who marked those images that, well, highlight where the landing is going to hopefully take place. So, go map Bennu. We're in the final stretch. Other software that I just might maybe be in the process of writing is software that will allow people to look at an image highlight a location uh, in XY coordinates and say this is something worth being named. And there's a possibility that those of you who are super users who've marked 50 images or more are going to get a first crack at naming features on the asteroid Bennu. So 
Is that maybe motivation to help you map more of this little asteroid that we've all been studying? Now, beyond that, um, what else can I say? We're looking to also celebrate the heroes among you with a little bit of mission swag. As many of you know, uh, mission teams have things that identify them as part of the team. Uh, with OSIRIS-REx, we saw at the launch of the rocket that a whole lot of the team members had identical shirts. We're gonna see if we can get some of the shirts for, or at least very similar shirts. Maybe, possibly, we're still checking on what's possible um, for the heroes who marked 500 images or more, 1,000 or more. And we're looking to see what stickers and patches and pins and things like that are laying around that um, we can use to make it clear you're part of the team. And for all of you, even if you only marked one image, we're going to be sending you a certificate. So, yeah, you guys have done amazing things. And we know you didn't ask for anything in return other than to be acknowledged. Well, the truth is we couldn't do what we're doing without you. For every eight hours of mapping that you do, you're probably saving the mission between $500 and $1,000, depending on if it's a cheap person or an expensive person that would have otherwise hired to do the mission. We couldn't do all of this mapping without you. And so we're just trying to find ways to say thank you. Okay, so I am going to awkwardly read your questions off of this iPad that I've brought with me and um, see what questions you have today. Um, all is fair, so go ahead and ask. And I'd also like to know, as I'm working on writing the next version of the Bennu Mapper software with the help of Annie and Terrell at the Planetary Science Institute, I'd also like to know, what are the things that you'd like to see added? We know you want a leaderboard. We're working on getting that. It's actually already out there. If Annie's watching, she can drop in a link. Um, we're going to be working to add all of that stuff to your user areas. Okay, so doing the old person, where do I need to put this, that it's in focus? Um, ooh, Paranor has pizza coming. I have pizza envy. We're, we're actually planning to get pizza Thursday night. We planned out food yesterday, and I'm already looking forward to the pizza. Um, hey there, Larry. Hey, DPI. Hey, Ed Thompson. Um, bit height. Hype. Thank you, Ed Thompson, for the bits. I have no cute dog today, but as soon as we shop vac all the floors to make sure there's nothing bad for dog paws, there will be dogs down here. Um, Ref's Matt is on the go. So is our instro. You may see him around here uh, tomorrow and the day after. And um, yeah, we're going to be working on doing all sorts of cool stuff together. Hello, Ironheart. Um, hello, Guido, who had pizza yesterday. And today is a pork something with paprika and stuff. I love how descriptive that is. Um, that is actually pretty much how I would describe something. Um, yeah, you're getting to see behind the curtains today um, to my Blair Witch Project basement. Uh, it's a bit scary down here. Um, it's a really weird space. I'm glad that you love the weird space. Oh, thank you for all of the bits, Keeper of Maps. The dogs will be returning. Just going to shop vac first. Um, <laughs> I am stuck in the basement. Sorry about the failure to transition the screen. Um, as I said, I'm currently using uh, Wirecast, and it makes it easy for me to make mistakes. I need to figure this out a little bit better. Um, hello, fellow hoodlum, welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a cool brick basement, Paranor. Part of that is, uh, because it's just that old of a house. It's an 1893 house. Um, 
<laughs> DPI is asking, livable for which life form? Um, I think the most common life form in our basement is um, pretty much any life form that would make you go, ew. I, we have two dehumidifiers running down here and I'm managing to keep it at about 60% humidity, but the second one of the humidifiers goes off, it bounces up to 80 or 90% humidity. So um, I've been working to eradicate cardboard for the very simple reason that cardboard gets this weird, slightly damp texture very quickly. Yeah. Thank you, Nebula Cluster, for the bits. Thank you so much. Um... Yeah, rest mat, dehumidifiers are truly key. Truly, truly create key. Um, Hansel and Gretel Paranor, I'm wondering what your reference is. Um, Veronica is saying, a lick of paint and it will be great. Um, so, so to switch views again, I don't think you can see it in the view that I have that I can share. Um, but the other wall of the basement is one, yeah, you can't really see on any of, of these views. Um, some of the bricks down here are covered in this black former plaster. And the reason it's all black is our house was originally heated with a coal burning boiler. And it was smoky and so the basement used to be painted and plastered, but um, it just got gross. And so the paint behind me isn't too bad, but a lot of the paint down here falls into the category of, oh dear God, I'm not sure I want to deal with that. Um, so that's our reality. Let's see what else. The basement has no dogs today, Stormer John. So the room that I'm in right now is actually our, our tornado shelter, or at least it's the room that we come and shelter in during tornadoes. It does have one window that's somewhat exposed, but it's right between our house and the neighbor's house, which is close in. So for that window to break, it would have to be one very specially directionalized tornado. Um, and so the dogs do come down here. The reason I'm not bringing them down every day right now is the other side of this chimney and wall that's behind me is my husband's woodworking shop. And so there are splinters, there's bits and pieces of this, that, and the other thing um, from both metalworking and woodworking. And I just want to shop vac the floor up, sweep it up, shop vac up the piles. And... Um, the shop vac required a fresh filter, which arrived yesterday. Shop vacuum will occur, then dogs will return. So stay tuned for the return of doggos. Okay, let's see what else is in here. Um, yeah, so Binary Ablaze is right. The dogs don't like the basement. Part of the reason the dogs don't like the basement is uh, Stella... The first time I brought her down to the basement, I tripped on the stairs carrying her and we both splatted. And so she associates coming to the basement with inadvertently getting thrown down the stairs. Um, so I don't blame her for that one. She was completely unharmed. I was not. I banged myself up. Um, but she didn't exactly enjoy that. And while Eddie will come down the basement stairs, they're just pieces of wood with no backs to them. So you can see under the stairs when you're going up the stairs and he does not like that. So I have to take him up the outside, um, staircase into the driveway instead of up the inside staircase. I'm hoping that I can get him past that or I will just like, get some cheap foam board or something to use to to make the stairs work a little bit better for him um easy to name features rocks someone really needs to name something rocky mcrock face and something else boulder mcboulder face this is all i ask all i ask um thank you crunchy for the tier one sub thank you so much it's so so appreciated um i bet there's lots of songs about rocks i hope there's lots of songs about rocks 
Uh, that that would make for one excellent filler music when we're hate mapping Bennu, and two great things to steal names from for naming things in the future. Um, yes, we now have a leaderboard. Uh, thank you for sharing the link, Binary Ablaze. Um, hey, Hanny's Warfer. Uh, oh, Keeper of Maps is out at his family cottage, which is on a lake and has a fabulous view. And um, you should all be jealous of him and his hammock. He shared some pictures yesterday. Um, so, so Veronica Cure, I, I asked the science team about using a spray paint tool to mark gravel and a star icon to drop on interesting things. We may be flagging interesting things in the future, but they said that the spray paint icon actually isn't as useful for them. Um, we may be getting rid of the rock tool altogether. We're still trying to figure that out. What we've been mapping so far is the, believe it or not, the areas that looked the least hazardous based on lower res um, images. So the mission team looked at a mosaic of all of Bennu with a slightly lower resolution. They selected out the region that we're now looking at. And based on the medium resolution, which is the highest we have currently, images that we currently have, they're selecting the sample. And then there's a bunch of science questions they want us to also attack. And so while phase one of Benny Mappers is winding up, there's other phases yet to come. So stay tuned, stay tuned. And thank you again for the 400 bits nebula cluster. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's a lot of very, very happy fungus down here. You are correct, DPI. Um, and creepy crawlies, we have those as well. I believe it was a regular everyday housefly that just attacked me. It's summer in the Midwest, houseflies abound. Um, it is a damp, squelchy place. That kind of defines the area along the Midwest where I live. Um, yeah, damp, squelchy place. So Hanny's Vorverp is asking, is your house near the bottom of the hill? Is that why it is so humid? Uh, no, thank God we are actually up on the bluffs above the Mississippi River. Um, so where we live is near the center of town, so we're slightly downhill from the highest point in town. And the only reason I know this is when I'm bike riding home, I basically just can sit there if I'm feeling particularly lazy um, and just coast home down this very gradual slope. But um, even though we're near the highest point in town and town is up on the bluffs above the Mississippi, we're still really close to the water table level. And when it rains too much, the water table level uh, actually is higher than the lowest points in our basement. So we have a sump pump. Um, because of the Mississippi River being so close, it's just a couple of miles away. Um, it's just generally a wet area. And we're lucky that we haven't flooded um, we won't flood with the Mississippi, but the Mississippi can get within an easy bike ride of my house. Um, it's always within an easy bike ride of my house, I should say. It can get within, I don't know, there's, so there's locks about three miles away. So the nearest of the Mississippi's um, locks and um, berms, are just a few miles away from my house. So it's it's all due to the Mississippi River. Um, yeah, storm shelter is completely essential here. Um, Larry is saying, replace the window with a periscope port. Uh, no, I like sunlight. Um, so far, we only have to come down in fear of tornadoes maybe five times a year which may sound like a lot, but that means that somewhere in the entire county I live in, there's a tornado. And my county is like the size of the state of Delaware. Um, we've had one tornado within a mile of my house, 
But in general, because of our location up on the bluffs, the geology and geography prevents them from coming here. Um, uh, ask a geologist, and I'm sure you'll get a playlist. I was actually paranoid thinking of Mika McKinnon too. She is indeed the person to ask. Hey, bad panda, welcome. And I like the Rocky McRock, oh God, it's another rock face. That is perhaps the most accurate name that has been suggested so far. Um, long live rock, needed every day. Not sure we need rocks every day. Um, <laughs> Ref's mat is on a plane. That is excellent, excellent. Um, so there's the information for the leaderboard. Oh God, it's full of rocks. We need to like do some sort of a make a famous quote about Bennu, be about Bennu. I don't know how to hashtag that, but that needs to be a thing as we finish up mapping these possible landing images uh, in the coming couple of days. Um, if any, I, anyone has an idea, um, Planetary Pan, you and I should join minds and see what we can come up with. Um, yeah. So this is all I've got for today. It is not just a slow news day. It is a no news day. But I took advantage of it to get the green screen back, to get the audio working. And um, hopefully you like what you see. And we're just going to keep making things better and better. Leaving in a jet plane. That is not about rocks, but it is fair to what Ref's Mad is doing right now. Um, Benu's theme song is I Will Rock You. Uh. <laughs> Larry, you do need to go observe the day star for at least 20 minutes a day. This is what everybody needs. Okay, um, so that's really all I've got for today. Um, Go map rocks, go measure those boulders, go find the occasional crater. Together we can finish our way through the Bennu images and I have the software that will enable me to email you and let you know you found the area where we're gonna try and grab some soil with the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft. Okay, everyone. Um, oh, man, I, I don't know how I'm going to start the credits from way over here. Um, Binary Blaze, if you're still there and you have the capacity to start the credits, um, I need to figure out how to get like an extender for my stream deck so it reaches this far across the room. Um, thank you for being here, everyone. We bring you the daily space most Mondays through Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. That's 6 p.m. London time and dinner for Guido. Um, it is almost lunchtime for me. It is lunchtime for Paranor. So when you're thinking of lunch or dinner, think of CosmoQuest. I guess that's the moral for today. Sundays, Annie brings you the Sunday Science Hour. That's our own binary ablaze. And in between, we bring you launches, landings, and everything else as it happens, unless it happens to happen at four in the morning, in which case we might be asleep. But we bring you a lot. So give us a follow. Follows are free right here on twitch.tv slash CosmoQuestX. Miss an episode? That's okay. Things get um, linked in over on YouTube. YouTube.com slash C for channel slash CosmoQuest. Check it out. Give us a sub. Those are free on YouTube. And as always, we are supported financially by you. We are some supported by your subs, your bits, your donations, your patronage over at patreon.com slash CosmoQuestX. If you can't support us monetarily, that is okay. Support us by doing science. Help us map Bennu. More worlds are coming in the fall. So thank you all for being here. 
And wherever you are in the world, have a fabulous morning, evening, or afternoon. And I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Bye-bye.